know, what's up world? Matt here, and I'm actually not quite ready for our video this week. Uh, could you just give me two more minutes so I can finish organizing and cleaning the studio? Okay, thanks. First, I need to sweep the floor. I made a mess with some snacks earlier. Okay, that's it, sweep the floor. Um, it's the end of the week, so I have to erase the board. I have this whiteboard that's a schedule of my week, and now that it's the end of the week, I need to erase the board. All right, that's taken care of. Okay, um, next up, I need to, oh, I've been working a lot this week, so I need to wipe the desk. My desk got pretty dirty with a lot of them. Scraps and pencil marks and stuff. So let me just wipe down my desk. There we go. Wipe in the desk. And oh, I see that I, I left some of my pens out. Let me put the pens away. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lucky pens. And I can put the pens away in my desk. Uh, oh, and last, I have some trash. Let me just put the trash in the trash can. One, two, oh no! There we go, two in the trash can. Not next to the trash can, put the trash in the trash can. There we go. And it looks like my studio's organized. My hair's all done, so. Here we go, lights rolling, and I'm gonna hide the microphone. We're all ready to go. What's up world, Matt here, and today we're going to be practicing the English of some common cleaning responsibilities and chores, similar to what I was just doing around the office. So now, let me show you some of those actions and see what you already know and can say. First, I'm going to show you those actions again and say what they are, so you can hear the word and see what I'm doing. So. The first cleaning classroom responsibility that we're going to talk about is erase the board. So I'm going to imagine I have a whiteboard and I'm going to erase the board. I'm clearing all of the writing off of the whiteboard or the chalkboard. I erase the board. All right. So next, I can take a similar motion and use it to wipe the desks. I can wipe right in front of me the same motion here, wipe the desks, or I can come over here and I can wipe the counter, same motion. So I can use this gesture for both of those, wipe the desk or wipe the counter. Now I'm going to keep saying erase the board or wipe the desks. I think those words go best together. Sometimes you can mix them up, but sometimes it sounds a little strange. So for now, I would practice using these words together. Erase the board and wipe the desk or wipe the counter. Okay, next we've got put away. Let's say you have something out and then you need to put it away. You can put away the book, put away the pencil, or put away the pen. Anything that you might be able to put inside of your desk or your bag, you can put away, right? Instead of being out, it's away. So that's going to be our gesture here. We've got erase the board, wipe the desk, and put away the books. Okay, next, sweep the floor. This one's a little bit bigger because I'm cleaning something down below. I'm sweeping the floor. And this is the gesture for when I use a broom to sweep the floor. Yeah. So we've got erase the board, wipe the desk, put away the book, pencil or pen, sweep the floor, and finally put the trash in the trash can. Put the trash in the trash can. Yeah. If you have something that you don't want, you can have it in the trash can to get rid of it. That's where we put trash or garbage. Those two words mean the same thing, but today we'll practice saying trash. So let's try all of those words again, but as I say the word, I want you to repeat it with me and do the action. So I'll say it and you repeat it and do the action. First up, say it with me, 
Erase the board. Erase the board. Nice. Second up, wipe the desks. Wipe the desks or wipe the counter. Okay. Third, put away the books or put away the pencils and put away the pens. Say it with me. Put away the books, pencils, and pens. Nice. Okay, next up we've got sweep the floor. Say it with me. Sweep the floor. All right. And finally, we've got put the trash in the trash can. Put the trash in the trash can. Nice. Good job saying those five cleaning actions and doing the five gestures with me. Now, I want to try practicing those words with you. I'm going to say one of those cleaning phrases and I want you to do the action. Then I'll show you what I was saying and you can see if you were right or wrong. All right, let's get started. First, wipe the desks. Wipe the desks. Yeah, that's wipe the desks. Nice. Okay, next, sweep the floor. Sweep the floor. Yeah, sweep the floor. Nice. Okay, number three. Put the trash in the trash can. Do the action for put the trash in the trash can. Nice, that was putting the trash in the trash can. Just like this. Okay, uh, next up, how about erase the board? Show me the action for erase the board. Yeah, that's erase the board. Okay, last up, show me the action for put away the pencils. Put away the pencils. Nice. Put away the pencils. Excellent work. Now let's try something similar, but a little bit different. I'm going to do the action and I want you to say the word that goes along with my action. Okay, ready? Yeah, that's put away the pencils or put away the books or pens. If you said anything with put away, that's right. Okay, next action. Yeah, that's erase the board, just like this. Okay, action number three. What am I doing? Yeah, that's sweep the floor. Nice job with the first three. Okay, number four. Mm. Mmm, yeah, nice memory. That's wipe the desks or wipe the counter. Either one works. Okay, um, last up. Hmm. Yeah, that's my gesture for put the trash in the trash can. Nice job practicing those terms. Now, let's practice those cleaning phrases in the context of a classroom conversation. One thing I'm thinking about is, with cleaning and responsibilities, I know I personally have preferences. There are some cleaning responsibilities that I like to do and other cleaning responsibilities that I do not want to do ever, right? There are things I would much rather do or prefer to do. So I want you to imagine a situation where there's one teacher and two students who have stayed behind after class at the end of the day and the three people are going to clean the classroom. First, each of the two students is going to share what they like to do and what they don't want to do. Then the teacher will offer a solution that gets all of the classroom clean, suggesting that one person do one or two cleaning responsibilities, another person do another two, and then volunteer to do one or two themselves. Let's try it out. I'm going to give you a sample scenario with two students. I'm going to play two different roles here. 
You'll see me in costume dressed up as Michael and then Mateo. I want you to listen to what Michael wants to do and doesn't want to do, and then what Mateo wants to do and doesn't want to do. And then you are going to be the teacher. You'll think, hmm, what should I tell each person to do? And then ask them, okay, Michael, please. And Mateo, please. And I will. And we'll practice like that, all right? So that's gonna be the structure. I'm gonna go change into costumes so that we can imagine a few students. And in a moment, you'll be introduced to Michael and then Mateo to have a classroom conversation. All right. Hello, teacher. Michael here, your favorite student. Can I help clean the classroom today? I want to erase the board, but I don't want to sweep the floor or put trash in the trash can, okay? Hey, yo, teacher, what up? Mateo here. Do you need any help? I can uh, put away the books, but I don't want to wipe the desks or sweep the floor or anything like that. All right? Cool. So if you were Michael and Mateo's teacher, what would you ask them to do? And what would you volunteer to do yourself? Take a moment to tell me, pause the video, and then I'll share with you my response of how I'd talk to these two students. All right, here's my response as teacher. <clears throat> okay, uh, Michael, please erase the board and wipe the desks. Mateo, please put away the books and put the trash in the trash can. I will sweep the floor. Thanks. How was that practice conversation? Were you able to listen to Michael and Mateo and give ideas to both of them on what classroom cleaning they could do? Let's try it one more time. Imagine it's the next day. We'll use the same two students, Michael and Mateo, but today they're going to share different wants and dislikes. So listen carefully and come up with an idea for what Michael can do to help, what Mateo can do to help clean, and what you will do to volunteer as teacher. All right. Hello, teacher. Michael here again. Can I help clean the classroom? Today, I want to sleep the floor, but I don't want to put trash in the trash can or put away the paper, okay? Hey, yo, teacher, what up? Mateo here. Do you need any help cleaning the class? I can like wipe the board, but I don't want to wipe the counter or put the trash in the trash can or anything like that. All right, cool. All right, so how would you talk to our two students today? Pause the video and let Michael and Mateo know what they can do to help clean the class and what you're going to volunteer to do. Then hit play and you can hear my response to them. Nice practice. So here's my example. <clears throat> okay, Michael, please sweep the floor and wipe the counter. Mateo, please wipe the board and put away the paper. I will put the trash in the trash can. Thanks everyone. So that's the end of our time together today. Great job practicing those classroom cleaning responsibilities. I hope this gives you some new ways to interact in the classroom and some new ways to make language communicative and something that brings us together as a community. Thanks so much. Have fun practicing and I'll see you next time.